right, so welcome to Friday, May 29th, 2020. All right, and page 190, notice how we spell it. The first word we are going to actually skip down to number two. It is the word critic. What's the word? Excellent, critic. So a critic is like a spokesperson, a commentator, a so-called expert or an authority. Sometimes people think it's a know-it-all. Uh, a critic, think of the Incredibles. I think the character's name was Ego. He was the food critic. Um, they evaluate, uh, a critic will evaluate things. You have uh, movie critics, you have all, all sorts of people who review things, okay? Could be technological uh, gadgets and gizmos, things like that. Critic, let's go. Critic. Critic, that's number two. Let's go. Critic. Critic. I don't know why it just became unfocused. Okay, now, everybody is a critic, as they say, and, and very often critic has a negative connotation. And uh, unfortunately, this is what people think. They think they can say whatever they want, and it's okay. So someone who's a critic likes to criticize. Not every critic is like that, but you understand when somebody says negative things, they find fault or they condemn you, sometimes they embarrass or attack you, they criticize you. Criticize. Let's go. Criticize. Criticize. Okay, notice it ends with a C. That's what we can do, all right? And then the Z. So let's go criticize. Let's go. Criticize. Criticize. Okay, I see a rule here, but we have things to mark up first. How do we mark this up? Underline the I and the sign the E twice. You know the rest. Okay, I see a rule here. That is rule two soft c when followed by y i or e now when someone criticizes you that's called criticism okay and sometimes criticism can be very very important i'll explain in a second we tend to think of it <clears throat> excuse me as a negative and by the way just getting back to this notice 190 190 10 less than 200 double c okay didn't mean to digress there, but uh, criticism. Uh, someone who gives, who offers opinions or who's opinionated, it's got a very negative connotation. They denounce it, um, you know, they kind of uh, make negative comments or judgments, things like that. On the other hand, criticism can be a very positive thing where they're showing appreciation towards you. You know what? My opinion of your, or of your illustration was that it was wonderful. I just didn't understand um, why you didn't add this to that, right? So it could show appreciation. It's your job. You analyze or you assess things, and they make valid points. You know, you know. Uh, here's a good example. There was much criticism about not opening up New York so quickly. The governor had had a rough time, so people were, you know, they had their criticism, and they said, "You told us to trust you. Now you have to trust us." Criticism. So let's go. Criticism. I'm sorry, messed up. Criticism. All right, it's a little odd because this is very unusual for us at this age. Criticism. Criticism. Okay, that's an S over there. Sorry, got a little... Um, okay, let's put a second sound over there. Criticism. All right. Now, what do we do with these three words? Triple brace. These are unusual words for, for such young kids. Yes, and I like that little loop there. So, no crit, don't criticize me. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, now, someone who is a critic sometimes is described as critical. Okay? He's a very critical person. He's a very negative person. On the other hand, critical can mean something that's important or crucial or significant. It has a very positive aspect to it. All right? So we need to understand that it is actually a homograph. Critical can be negative, like you make negative or nasty comments or uh, disapproving, judgmental type of things. Oh, she's very critical. Look, she's always saying this, that. On the other hand, it's odd because it has the opposite meaning from the same word. Okay, critical can mean important or crucial or significant. It's, it's critical that the Wright brothers understood what wing warpage was to, to uh, be successful flyers. Um, it was critical that Ruby Bridges not give in to the ugly white mob when they were trying to prevent her um, 
from entering and integrating the school at, 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 in, in, in the South, all right? Crit, uh, critical, let's go. Critical, critical, let's go. Critical, critical, all right? So we can use it more than one way. It is a homograph, so we're gonna see the negative and the positive, okay? And what do we do with critic and critical? All right, very good. And even going back to the word critic, I mean, I think of the camel dances, right? The negative spokesperson, uh, a spokes camel <laughs> for it. You're never going to be a dancer, da, 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 blah, 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 blah. Camel didn't listen. The emperor's new clothes, right? They were, they were very critical. They criticized, oh, well, if you don't see the beauty of the clothing, you're just not sophisticated enough. All right, there you go. That's what a critic does. Very often they're negative, but not always. They can be good critics. Like when Mr. Modell says, you know, maybe, maybe you need to work on this or this, that or them. not trying to be negative. All right, anyway, getting back to the spelling words, we're going to go back to an old spelling word. The word is acquire. What's the word? Exactly, which means to get or to obtain, to receive, to gain or to earn, like to purchase or to buy. Right, like I'm going to acquire a house when I get older. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to earn my money. I'm going to acquire it. It means to get. And don't say I I, I acquire a clo I acqu I acquire a clo uh, cold. That's not what I mean. When you go to a new school, you often acquire new friends. You 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 get those new friends. You obtain them. You receive them. You earn them. You gain something important. Acquire. Let's go. Ac acquire. Acquire. First syllable, ac, second syllable, choir. And when you acquire things, we call that an acquisition, but we'll get to that another time. How do we mark this up? On the line, the qu, the i, and the silent e twice. Draw an arrow back, why? You got the rest. So Q and U stick like glue. That is rule one. All right, old spelling word, number seven, is the word muscle. What's the word? Believe it or not, you could use it more than one way. You'll, you'll see in a second. Okay, we say muscle, but we spell it muscle. Okay, so let's go. Muscle. Muscle. And it comes from Latin, and I'm not going to explain it because you are going to look up the etymology. First syllable, mus. Second syllable, co. But we have two things to mark up. Underline the C and the silent E twice. Job number four, every syllable has to have at least one vowel. Now, the reason muscle is actually a, a homograph, we can use it more than one way, is because muscle is actually body tissue. No, not the tissues that you use to blow your nose, but the fibers that your body is made out of, okay? So, and it describes your strength or your power, all right? It's body tissue. On the other hand, it's an action word, like pushing or shoving, a show of force. Like sometimes when a door is hard to get open, you try to push and push. You try to muscle your way through it. You try to force it open. Okay, so you're going to have to explain what that is as well when you write your sentences. But getting back to the physical type, in terms of your body, when someone has, um, uh, is full of muscle, we describe them as muscular. Okay, muscular. Look at that, look at that guy who works out. Man, he's got a really muscular body. Look at that lady, right? She's got a very muscular body. Let's go. Muscular. Muscular. All right, so let's go. Mus Q. Sorry. Lar. Muscular. All right, so how do we mark this up? Underline the U and the R. The U can say U. At the end of a syllable, that is rule four, but notice it ends with a silent E. We also drop the silent E uh, over here, and that is rule 13. All right, and what do we do with muscular and muscle? muscle? Very good. The etymology is a great one for this, and it makes complete sense. Number eight is the word complete. What's the word? Exactly, when something is whole, when it's full, when it's total, it's complete, like when you complete your work, okay? Let's go, complete, complete. First syllable, com. Second syllable, pleat. How do we mark this up? On the line of E and the silent E twice, draw an arrow back, you know the rest. Now, when you complete your work, 
we say it's called it's called a completion the completion of your work earns you um, an excellent grade okay so completion means when it's final when it's done when it's ending when it's a conclusion right like this is the completion of this story this is the conclusion of this story we'll continue with the next part tomorrow okay uh, conclusion can also sometimes be an achievement or a fulfillment or the realization of something the completion of the building meant that it was done what a great accomplishment okay completion notice it ends with that t okay completion com ple shun completion so let's go com ple shun completion how do we mark this up on the line the e and the sh the e can say e at the end of a syllable excellent that's rule four and notice we drop the silent e yes rule 13. Okay, and what do we do with complete and completion? Awesome. All right, we're almost done. Last few words are very, very easy. The next word, number 10, is the word cozy. What's the word? Excellent, cozy. Something that's comfortable, right? That's cushy or you snuggle, a, you know, you're snug. You're like snug as a bug in a rug. As they say, it's very welcoming or agreeable. The person has a very cozy personality, a very agreeable personality. All right, so let's, uh, it, cozy, cozy can also mean warm, like in front of a fire or under a blanket, a uh, homey, very pleasant, uh, sheltered, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, so cozy, let's go. Cozy, cozy. Let's go. First syllable, co, second syllable, z. All right, how do we mark this up? Excellent, underline the O, the O can say O, you got it, that's rule four. And again, cozy in the emotional, you know, it makes you feel very safe and very secure. Now we're going to change the Y to an I and uh, write the word cozier, okay? Like this bed, think about Goldilocks and the three, bed, the three bears. This bed is cozy, but this next bed is even cozier. Just say cozier and write it. Okay, how do we mark this up? On the line, the I, the E twice, and the R. Change the Y to an I. And that is rule 15. Now that, that bed was cozy. This bed was even cozier. We're comparing two beds. But when we're comparing more than two things, it was the coziest of them all. Coziest. Just say coziest and write it. Coziest. Coziest. Okay? And that's what we call a superlative. Okay? Co whoops. Chain. On the line of O, the E, the S, and the T twice coziest what do we do with these three words triple brace okay so let's go coziest cozier cozy cozy completion completion complete complete okay muscle i'm sorry muscle muscle we say muscle but we spell it muscle and remember it is a homograph muscular muscular acquire acquire you need that c in there Okay, let's go. Criticism, criticism, criticize, criticize, critic, critic, critical, critical. And again, that is a homograph, both negative and positive. It's a tough one, but you got to do it. 